Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Earth's Medicine, the channel that introduces you to the healing wonders of Mother Earth with a Jamaican flavor. So in today's video, we are going to be profiling the Jamaican medicinal tree, Basida. So we're going to be looking at its medicinal properties and how it is used in traditional medicine. And we're going to start right away. The scientific name for this tree is Guazuma olmifolia and it belongs to the Malvaceae plant family. The genus is called Guazuma and Jamaicans commonly refer to this tree as Basida but in other countries um, there are other common names. The preferred common name though is West Indian Elm. People also call it Bay Cedar, Bastard Cedar, Pigeon Wood, Mutamba, and um, there are other common names as well. The Basida tree can grow to about 30 meters in height. And in terms of diameter, it's usually between 30 and 40 centimeters. The crown of the tree is rounded and the bark is grey-brown and it's usually furrowed and rough. The leaves are alternate in two rows and they are ovate to land shape and around say about 6 to 13 centimeters long and about 2.5 or 6 centimeters wide they are long pointed and finely sawtoothed And the tree has flowers that are formed in clusters at the base of the leaves. They are small and brownish yellow in color. And the fruits are hard and green when they are young. They eventually change to black and um, they are warty and round to elliptical in shape and they contain many seeds. The Basida tree can be found growing in the Caribbean and other parts of the Americas like South America and Central America also in Mexico and some parts of Asia such as India for example and also in parts of Africa as well. In Jamaica you can find it growing a lot in forests and cow pastures and um, the tree thrives best in full sun it will tolerate a wide range of soils and it is tolerant of humid and dry climates it reproduces by direct seeding root stumps or bare root seedlings
so the wood is used for posts you know for fences around pastures also for general carpentry light construction and charcoal the tree is also used to provide shade in pastures and um, fruits and leaves are used as fodder in Jamaica it's actually a preferred fodder tree and the seeds are edible whether they are fresh or cooked and the bark and young stems are used to make rope and twine this tree has quite a bit of medicinal properties you know for example it has antibacterial anti-inflammatory anti-fungal anti-viral astringent it has blood purifying properties cardiac and digestive properties it has diuretic properties so you know it can help the body to expel excess water and salt it also has hypotensive properties vulnerary so that means it has wound healing properties oxytoxic meaning that it can hasten childbirth by causing contractions of the uterine smooth muscles it has febrifuge properties so it can reduce fevers it has diaphoretic properties so it can increase perspiration it has anti tusive properties so it can be used as a cough suppressant it has properties against gonorrhea it also has hair growth promoting properties anti tumor and um, cytotoxic properties so that means that it um, has the ability to kill cells including cancer cells and um, anti protozoal properties so this means that it can kill or inhibit the growth of a type of organism um, called protozoan the bark is a rich source of tannins and um, something called proanthocyanidins, which are antioxidant compounds. There's one in particular, um, procyanidin B2, which has been shown in various studies to help promote hair growth and um, alleviate baldness. So, um, you know, if you suffer from alopecia it can help with that other research indicates too that it also has um, anti-tumor effects um, especially against melanoma it can also lower blood pressure and protect the kidneys In Jamaica, there are men who use the bark of the tree to make a decoction and they just drink this decoction to enhance their sexual performance. They make this decoction by boiling the bark for a period of time with other medicinal plants, you know, like cheney root and strongback, for example. In other cultures people use the bark to make a decoction and they drink this decoction to treat many ailments you know like for example syphilis diarrhea respiratory issues you know like colds and um, pneumonia asthma bronchitis they also use it to treat coughs and fevers, dysentery, malaria, gastritis, 
rheumatism problems that are related to the spleen urinary problems kidney issues prostate problems and to aid in childbirth it is also used to induce perspiration as a tonic and as a blood cleanser this decoction is also used topically as well you know to bathe wounds rashes sores and to treat different skin issues you know like dermatosis and leprosy also to treat elephantiasis ulcerations and infections people also apply it to the scalp to treat alopecia and to combat parasites of the scalp a tea made from the leaves is taken internally to treat things like gonorrhea fevers liver and kidney issues dysentery and diabetes and people also drink this tea to help them to lose weight a tea made from the leaves is also used externally to treat things like wounds skin eruptions and baldness as well the seeds are infused in water and they drink this to treat things like diarrhea dysentery colds coughs asthma um bronchitis syphilis gonorrhea um anorexia stomach issues constipation and um, high blood pressure people also use it as a diuretic and as an astringent as well a decoction made from the fruits is also used to treat diarrhea kidney issues and colds and um, a decoction made with the bark of the root is used to treat hemorrhoids and dysentery because this plant has been documented in several animal studies to have uterine stimulant activity it is not advisable for pregnant women to take it it is also not recommended for lactating women to take it either um, the plant has been documented to lower blood pressure and it can inhibit something called angiotensin 2 to break that down for you guys it can help to relax your veins and arteries so you know it will lower your blood pressure so people with low blood pressure should not use this plant without supervision and advice from a doctor people with a history of heart issues and those taking heart medications should also not use this plant without supervision and advice from a doctor this plant may interact with antihypertensive drugs and the leaves contain small amounts of caffeine so if you are someone who is sensitive or allergic to caffeine then it's not recommended for you to use this plant and lastly guys this plant should be taken in moderation when you take it orally because large doses can cause nausea vomiting and diarrhea medical disclaimer the information shared on earth's medicine is for the purpose of enlightenment it is not to be used as a substitute 
for pharmaceutical medicine. If you are feeling ill or you have any health concerns, please speak to your doctor about same.